All right, what's up guys? We're gonna go and uh, go to some coffee shops. I thought this would be a fun kind of little video series to start where I'll take you guys to some shops that I actually go to, like shops that I think are interesting, that in my opinion are worth your time. If you are visiting the Bay Area, you know, what are the shops that are worth while worth going to and I think these will check a lot of the boxes of what a lot of you crazy coffee nerd enthusiasts people will go after but also I hope to show off some shops that I think uh, that are quite approachable to a variety of of uh, people but while I drive I'll tell you a bit about this shop uh, kind of how I discovered them and you know what's good about these uh, shops talking a bit about coffee and water lab about this shop so this is a shop that I think is quite interesting. I think Coffee and Water Lab is a really fantastic example of how you can utilize modern technologies in coffee, uh, new tools, new devices, new pieces of equipment to really improve the workflow as well as experience for your customers. I wanted to take you guys there because I think they've, they're they doing great work out there. So anyway, this is a shop that uses a lot of automated brewers, a lot of automated roasting. They have a bellwether. And when they opened back in 2021, I went to that grand opening and I didn't think they had the coffees fully dialed in. And more, more so, it wasn't really like the coffees that were, they weren't dialed in. It was just like they weren't sourcing very interesting coffees. They were roasting coffees on the Bellwether. I think they were probably using pretty standard profiles, but most recently, at least in the past six to eight months, they have greatly improved. Where we, as at least the guys that you see hang out with me, these crazy nerds, right? We go to this shop to have a great time. And the reason why we can have a great time is because we are now able to get coffees that are kind of crazy and they're roasted on the bellwether. I often have problems with bellwether roasts where I'm like, it just tastes, it tastes a little like thin. It's not like fully there. And I think that was a big problem uh, that in a lot of just typical bellwether roasts, but Coffee and Water Lab has kind of circumvented that slash they've just started to source better coffee, kind of crazy coffees actually. Coffees that I wouldn't traditionally drink because I like clean wash coffees and all that, right? But when I'm out and about and I'm at a coffee shop and I'm trying to enjoy the environment, I kind of actually do like getting some uh, crazier coffees because it just like improves the experience, right? It's like, I'm not trying to evaluate like what is going on all the time. I am trying to enjoy myself there, but I just remember the last time I went there, they had this red Bourbon, uh, natural, Colombian natural. I would never drink that coffee at home because to me, I'm like, oh man, this is too funky, too boozy, too weird, too crazy. But when I'm at the coffee shop, when I'm out and about, when I'm with my friends, I kind of like to have coffees that are quite potent because you know, you're know you going out there, if you're an enthusiast, you're a nerd, you probably already are, have a mindset of, oh man, this is gonna suck because that's what every single enthusiast does. Like the expectations of shops are just so low. So for me, when I go into these shops, I always order like the craziest coffee because you know, you never know. You gotta give it a chance, right? Like everybody's always down to give a chance, right? Whatever, it's like five to 15 bucks, depending on where, where you are, right? I wanna give the shop a chance, I wanna give them business. And that Red Bourbon and whatever crazy coffees they have, they had like Galaxy Hops, they had all these crazy things. All of those coffees have been quite impressive. Honestly, quite impressive. Now, sometimes they don't brew them as well as I'd like them to be brewed, but it shows me that they are trying that that the coffees, that they can source coffees that are pretty damn good. And I think that's been my experience with uh, the, the recent changes of the shop. They also have really great seasonal drinks, cold brews, all that stuff. We'll go in and we'll show you, but we're pulling off right over here at Saratoga Avenue and we're gonna go and uh, go visit the shop. I've just been going here over the past kind of year. It's just cool to see the shop improve. And also, I really like that the owner, Lewis, is so open to feedback. Like, I've talked to this guy so many times. Every time I go into the shop, I talk to the guy and I tell him, like, all the, you know, I just complain. I basically am like, yo, I wish you guys were, like, doing micro lots and light roast stuff. And I said that actually about a year or so ago, and they're doing it. And they're giving us 
at least enthusiasts, crazy coffees. And because these are like, you know, very deeply processed coffees, it's actually coffees that normal people can appreciate. Like, I think this is one of the very few places that is actually taking risks, at least in the South Bay, in, you know, the San Jose, Cupertino, Saratoga, Sunnyvale area, where they're actually taking pretty big risks. Selling some of these more like premium lots of coffee, these more funky coffees. And I lucked out, I just pulled in the plaza and I found a spot, let's go. So that's usually rare, um, but got myself a nice spot here. Let's go into the shop. Harry, that you've seen many times before in all the streams, all the videos, he's gonna be joining us and we're gonna, we're gonna get some coffee with him. So, all right, let's go inside. Very cool, thank you. <laughs> yeah, look at that, you can take, take a sip of it. Dude, look at that just, foam. Just, just, a, just a foam, right? Yeah. I, it's probably smooth. I think they usually use like a Guatemalan for this. Yeah. It's super smooth. All right, so we're sitting actually in the back here. The roaster is packed on a side, which makes sense. There's a lot of people just studying. Yeah, people were working, studying. They got the toast, got the coffees. I've gotten this espresso a lot over the kind of year. It's a pretty standard Kenyan espresso. I personally feel like this would benefit being pulled a little longer. Or a little chocolate. Like yeah, you chocolate. get the chocolate, which is fine, but I always like uh, very fruity, crazy Kenyans. This is one of the few places that is actually pulling good, good espresso <laughs> in the South Bay. The thing that still surprises me is that, you know, it's roasted on Bellwether. Like, bell, like Bellwether, right here. Usually Bellwether roasts to me, at least maybe because it's an espresso, but at least on filter, I sometimes feel like they're a little thin. Like, there's this, like they're not as like vibrant. Like, the acidity is not as structured sometimes in Bellwether roast. But that's why we get something like this Koji Geisha here. Because like these very deeply processed coffees, I feel like on Bellwether, it's actually fine. Especially, you know, we're at a coffee shop, right? It's like, I'm not, I don't care. I'm not here to like, evaluate everything. We're gonna have a great time. I just wanted to have something that's uh, an experience rather than right. just like coffee itself. Espresso tastes fine. I find a lot of shops nowadays dial in a lot for sweetness. Like you'll see a little bit of a city and just massive sweetness. That's exactly what's happening here um, with this Kenyan espresso. It tastes good. It tastes, it, it's, I have it tastes no fine. I, 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 can't, I cannot complain about this. Yeah, well, well, well like you're a nerd, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm a nerd. Like this guy's a nerd. Like it's too much chocolate for me. <laughs> but right. like, but. So I'm like, well, I can at least just come out here and order it if I want to pinch, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's a Kenyan, you know, at least it's something that I know what to expect. Yeah. And like, they, they need to also give you sparkling water with it. Like, a lot of places just give you a cup of espresso and that's it. Yeah. I'm gonna get out of the frame here, but I'm always usually like pretty impressed with their uh, really light roast or like higher end. The micro lot. The micro, micro lot, lot series, yeah. Nobody else here, at least in the South Bay, has like, newer shops i would say aside from chromatic we're gonna go to chromatic as well because we're good yeah, friends with chromatic friends. nobody here at least has embraced some of these like i would say much more lighter um crazy coffees like very deeply fermented coffees all of that this here is it's a koji mushroom anaerobic from tolima Colombia. tropical fruits i don't know what that means <laughs> i mean it's just like these processes are getting like they before they had one where, where there was a uh, galaxy hops. Galaxy hops. They had a Macerated. natural red bourbon, which was good. Like this place serves like CM coffees too, which is crazy. Like yeah. you, outside of like deeper into San Jose, which is where Chromatic is, this is probably one of the only shops that is doing something like this. Uh, there is a shop near us that also serves Passenger, but Passenger's not doing this type of stuff. Like yeah. they're not like the Passenger isn't dropping like crazy, crazy. CM, double, anaerobic, whatever coffees <laughs> nowadays. But you can get that stuff here at the shop, which is cool. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. That's funky. It is. It's it's like, um, it's, it's kind of like fruit roll up. Like I get, I get a bit of fruit roll up in that. It's almost hitting to the point where, um, at least on the brewing side, you can clearly tell that like, we're almost reaching some of those bitters that you get from like very deeply processed coffees. Um, but generally speaking, this is pretty good. Like I'm getting like a very impressive coffee from a South Bay coffee shop uh, that isn't deep into San Jose, which is rare. <laughs> like, I don't know, sick too. Yeah, in a nice plaza, right? But yeah, I don't know, this is like good. 
We have normal people drinking this stuff. I don't know, man. They kind of sounded surprised when they were in it. <laughs> but like, um, no, even like the the person that was at the ca the cashier was like, oh, nice, that's a good choice. Like they know it's good. They want to sell it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they like really want people to try this. I can tell. Yeah, and this is brewed on Porsetti as well. A lot of these shops dial in for more um, sweetness. Like this is a very sweet cup. Wait, like I would actually mm -hmm. would make this a little coarser mm -hmm. for the city to shine out a little yeah, more. Yeah, like higher agitation, uh, these types of things, which I don't think you can achieve with a Porsetti, so maybe that's why they don't do it. But at the same time, like, you know, this is still taking like a copy that I would say that is very impressive in the sense of showing people what coffee can be like but then making the brew actually much more approachable like i don't think most normal people would want to drink uh this coffee with if, if the acidity was a bit higher like right like i would like i would give an example like i would um introduce like my friend to some some like crazy black and white coffees mm -hmm. right um they have some in kaizen in palo alto and it was like this is really good but it was too acidic for me mm -hmm. Oh, this, he would actually probably like this one instead. Yeah, just like the acidity is a, a much more, I would say, integrated, uh, finish is much sweeter. It's it's just like a much more uh, approachable cup, um, even though it is a very crazily processed coffee. Seven out of ten. Yeah, yeah, they're like seven, eight out of tens across the board. Like, this is going to probably be like, you know, a nine out of ten for normal people for like, maybe someone like me and Harry who are more like crazy about it, right? We would be like, oh yeah, like we think the coffee's great, but it could be brewed a little bit differently, more to our preferences. But at the same time, you know, you take a step back, you're like, look, there are normal consumers ordering these coffees. It's not bad. Yeah, they have, they still have to do cold brew. They're, yeah, they got to do cold here. brew. Yeah. They're doing, they're also doing so much for this. Like, there's actually yeah. like pretty There's a ton menu. of stuff on the menu. But I actually quite like the cold brew here. I'm gonna get so much hate if people actually <laughs> dig into this. They're like, wow, Ryan likes cold brew. It's like, yeah, you know, sometimes you just want chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just want chocolate, man. Like, but also like you order the crazy, crazy processed stuff with the cold brew and it's fun, right? Yeah, actually like, you know, it's like about, it's like a palate experience where you'll drink the cold brew, they'll give you the chocolate. It's straight chocolate. <laughs> but then when you drink the, the, the pour over, you're gonna get all the wild fruits. Like, if you, especially if you do it side by side. Yeah, I actually quite like their pour overs now. Like, they've greatly improved just simply by picking more interesting coffees and sourcing and like roasting really great coffees. Thank you. We also ordered a fun, a fun drink as well. Wanted to showcase all of their all, all drinks. drinks. That rose coffee. Oh, we also got to eat the toast soon as well. All right, so look at the spread of stuff. We already downed the espresso. Uh, cold brew is getting down. Obviously, there's a lot of caffeine here. What is this? You ordered this one also. Yeah, so, so I wanted to get a special featuring from them. This is the the rose fog, right? So it's like a play on the London fog. It's a black tea, um, rose buds, and steamed milk. Yeah. So no no coffee. In no this. coffee, but they're, they're out of like coffee. It's, yeah, we uh, we got enough coffee here, but. It's like, you know, you can go there, you get something that's like, this is most really approachable for most people. People love cold brew. Espresso is pretty good. And then we got like stuff that checks the boxes for both actual normies and crazy nerds. <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah, I still like having like specialty drinks because it's like they, they've crafted it. It's not like they, they just like threw things together. Right? Yeah, they, I remember them having like uh, another rose latte before and I thought it was quite good. And you know, they're just doing the same thing. No espresso in this one. But I always get the, the pores here and the pores are fun. And um, you know, they, they're trying. Like this is actually a great example of a shop that <laughs> is actually trying in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in terms of like shops here in the South Bay, like not in San Jose, not Chromatic, very few. Very, very few. That, that there I are can, some, but yeah. they're just few. That's, yeah. the, that's the point. That, that are like genuinely showing that they're trying, that they're like taking feedback. Like I will say that I have come here across a year and I've complained about a lot of things. I've said a lot of weird things to the owner. <laughs> it's, it's just because like I'm coming from a point of like, oh, I want to go to a shop that checks the boxes for me. Does that check the, does that mean it's it's good for everybody else? No, absolutely not. But like 
stuff that I like, right? And I, I, I respect shops that have owners that actually take feedback and that like actually listen to, to you know random people saying stuff. Obviously, I'm a customer, so I'll say stuff. But like, um, I just like that I can take people to the shop who are at any journey of their coffee, any 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 skill level. Like you can get, yeah. and it's great. Like, I like that. Like, the, like, don't you want to be a coffee nerd and be able to bring friends? Yeah. And in, either introduce them or just meet them there for coffee, right? It's not like you have to bring your friends there just to. Yeah, just for like, like a coffee experience, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. no, I'm trying to take them for a lot of other stuff too, which is why we also got like the toast. Yeah, the toast is really. The toast good. is hella yeah, good. Yeah, we've had this yeah, before. Yeah, the toast is so good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. I'm a fan of the toast. They do everything in house too. This place using the bellwether is that they're, they're actually like one of the only roasters that's like really pushing mm -hmm. the bell, bellwether's capability. Yeah, like they're they're the ones that are like pushing ultra light. Yeah, like before there wasn't anyone using it. Everyone was doing like medium roast. They've really made improvements really impressive improvements uh, here. And I think they hired a new roaster um, and then they're starting to push like these these coffees. We're, we're, we're getting to a point where where like we as nerds and enthusiasts, we're not like, oh yeah, that is clearly a Bella the Roast. Like you can clearly taste that in some of the coffees here. Like I think they just use pretty standard profiles that yeah. Bella there has. But outside of that, like some of these lighter roast coffees, like the limited micro release stuff that they're doing, they're they're like really pushing the bellwether. In the context of like sitting in a coffee shop and being like, yes, what is roasted on what roaster? Like I don't think I would care. I'm not even. I don't even think. Right. About like that. I just. Right. I'm like, mm -hmm. It tastes good. Right. <laughs> it tastes good. You gotta, you gotta try this. Right. You gotta try this guy. Oh, it's like a super rose for her. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> it's nice? It's actually really nice. Wow, it just smells like flower. I mean, I'm literally smelling yeah. flowers at the top of this. Mm. It's actually pretty balanced. That's really good. Very, very integrated florals. It's sweet. Milk is steamed nicely. I also think this was steamed on Eversys too. Like this is straight up, <laughs> auto straight up off. auto. Yeah, like auto automation, man. Like this place taps into automation. They invested money at, into improving people's workflows. Like these baristas here, I don't think, you know, they seem to be a little, little, little more talkative than what we are used to. <laughs> it's also decent behind here as well. They, they've been doing pop-ups and stuff. I mean, this so, place is called uh, Coffee and Water Yeah, Coffee lab. and Water Lab. So like, they even like sell water, like really specialty water mm -hmm. systems here. Yeah. And like as an enthusiast, that's just like, well, we, we mess with water a lot. It's just cool that they're like putting that into consideration as well. It's just a nice shop to be at. I also really like the design of the shop. Like it's a great place to go and just like sit down, hang out, drink some coffee. This place is always packed when it's hot yeah. outside as well. It's always um, packed all the time. Yeah, well it's always packed all the time. There's actually like not a lot of coffee shops where you can sit around. That is open to like relatively late. late. This like, place is open like six, six, seven, six, seven, six, seven yeah. nowadays. It's pretty good. It just covers so many, checks so many boxes. And I wanted to like you know talk about this one as like that first shop we're gonna go to. We're gonna go to all the all the other shops that I think that are worth going to. <laughs> I don't know shops that I think are worth or going like to. The ones that are trying that you think they're trying. At the very yeah, least. that I think are trying, right? And it, like obviously there's shops that I'm I'm not going to be aware of and like let me know if if the. I don't, know, I don't know. I feel like I have a pretty decent pulse on the Bay Area, but like, you know, we've gone to some grand openings of shops <laughs> and we've been quite disappointed. Um, and, you know, usually like, yeah, grand opening, right? It's, it's, it's hard, um, but we give them a few months and usually they pick up. And I think this shop is just such a great example of improvement. Like they, they just gen they genuinely yeah. improved. I mean, it's not like we're even just like, you want to take a punch at people that are, you know, just opening and mm -hmm. they're not good. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll revisit and like see if they even improve. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll revisit. But um, as of now, like, you know, this is a shop that's been on the come up. And I think like, I'm just like really excited to see where, where they go. And like, I want to wish them all the success. So, you know, this is like a fun video, right? We're just going to talk about, talk, talk, about our, talk about our experiences at coffee shops, which sometimes are good and bad. I do have a few coffee shops in mind, which may want to visit, <laughs> revisit, like definitely revisit because I didn't have a, a stellar experience at the beginning <laughs> with some of them, but um, this one's been a great one, greatly improved, 
um, could definitely recommend you, you come here. And uh, you can come here if you're a nerd, you can come here if you're, a, if you're just getting into the hobby, and I think it's super fun. All right, we'll probably go to another shop with Harry later on, because <laughs> he's, he's free and I can take him around. Uh, but all right, see you guys later.